Sakya Muni Buddha again. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is the 7th, August 2020. I am in IBSC, International Buddhist Study College in Thailand. This is the section of meditation sharing about mindfulness practice. Firstly, a little bit introduction about myself. I am a Vietnamese Buddhist monk doing uh, AMA study in Buddhist study at, at second year in Thailand. You know, being as a monk, a meditation practice is my way of living my life. So what actually the uh, Buddhist meditation means, the Buddha sasana or the Buddha's teachings is to edify, to enlighten human beings to set human beings free from the samsara, the cycle of birth and death, leading to the cessation of all kinds of suffering in this very life. Then how to do so? The way to do so is called Buddhist way. That is to say Buddhist meditation. Buddhist meditation is kind of meditation to liberate human mind from controlling by the three kinds of poison called anger, illusion, and desire. How many kinds of meditations actually? In normal, we have only two. We call samadhi or samatha and vipassana. That is usually called and mentioned in Theravada Buddhism. In Mahayana Buddhism, we have Zen Buddhism. Or Zen meditation kind of way. And in Tibetan, we have uh, mudra meditation. How do I learn meditation? I learn meditation by reading and try to understand the Buddha's original suttas about meditation. I try to understand by myself, try to approach certain special meditation master in both traditions. Mahayana and Theravada. And especially, I try to apply it into my daily life practice in any corner, time, space, as much as possible. The way I learn is the way I live. I would like to share with you the way I practice. Usually, as human, we don't believe and we don't trust ourselves much. Therefore, we want some others tell us what to do. But when we learn Buddhist meditation, the Buddha tells us what should not to do. And the next step is to be aware in what we are doing. In the Sutta, Sila Sutta, Samyutta Yadikaya 47, 21, the Buddha said in Bali, Usalani, Silani, Satipatthanam, Bhavanaya, Vuttani, Bhagavata, those gifted spoken by the Buddhas for the purpose of developing the four foundations of mindfulness. That means the precept is the foundation of meditation practice in Buddhism. Have to be very carefully observed and keep. We have to beautify our body in the first place so that the mind is something which meditation can deal with. The second step is right understanding about the mind. If we don't understand the mind, we can't practice Buddhist meditation effectively. How our human mind works or functions. The mind always wants to choose. The mind leads through choice. If we don't choose, therefore the mind drops. So Satipatthana is not to choose any mental noise mental stories or the thinking process. Not to reprogram, but Satipatthana is the key to unlock all kinds of mental noise, all kinds of program, all kinds of story. Therefore, all the problem which come from the program, the story, will automatically end. How it works in, that, in such way? By mindful on any phenomena, having in the body, the feeling, the mind, and the mental states. Because phenomena comes without our invitation. So if you go 
by themselves. We do not interrupt its process. They practice examples. For example, on the body contemplation of the body, Kajanubasana, when walking, knowing walking, there is no demand for something to be happened in the future so that I am feel satisfied my desire. I just walk in such a way, only there is the walking with the observing. There's no any hope from the walking. There's no the destination needs to be reached as fast as possible. I just be aware of my step. I enjoy every step in the present moment. About the mind, for example, how do I deal with my anger? You see, if there is no sati on the emotion of anger, it destroys me most of the time. So meditation practice now with the sati, I try to see what will happen with my anger. I don't practice meditation to gain something and I do not check anything to practice meditation, which means I do nothing with my anger, but just observe it deeply enough. From the moment it does not appear yet, until the moment it arises and it vanishes. And what happens next, you know? The inside of anicca, impermanent, anatta, non-self, and emptiness will come up to my mind. I do not look for insight. The insight will come up to me when the obstacles and the hindrance is no more there in my mind. And who I am when I meditate, actually, at the moment I meditate, I am just a, a gatekeeper, a duvarika, mentioned by the Buddha in Samyutta Yanika 35. A gatekeeper means the one who observes carefully every strange people or the familiar people come and go in and out of the gate. Or the cow observing in Majimanikaya 1, the Sutta 117. The Buddha mentions very beautiful ways to understand and apply mindfulness to our daily life practice. It's like a cow herd, the one who observes the herd of cows. We just do nothing, just sit there and be aware all the cow herds individually and as a whole. Sati Kariya Mevahosi. Those things were there. Ete Damasti. It means my anger is there. It's kind of a very ugly cow there. And I just observe that cow, how it's come, how it's stayed, and how it go. Do nothing. So using Sati to see my body, uh, my emotion and my mind, my mental states up and down clearly, but not to take it for granted. Taking for granted, you know, is an unconscious process. That is the compulsory force or the past derived of karma. So sati is not to stop the process, but to put my awareness into it. At that moment, I am no, I am no more taking granted my anger. I am in charge of it fully with awareness. I am mindful of my anger. So we don't look for the insight anywhere else. We look for the insight by looking deeply into the nature of the anger. And the insight of impermanence and not time emptiness of the anger will appear. And that moment we call enlightenment of the anger. So what is the benefit of meditation practice? Firstly is individual quality. We can enhance our life quality by mindfulness practice. Have you heard about the Shimon Freud's theories of the personality? He said the unconscious mind, it has the potential to cause a number of the problem, including, you know, the anger, the bias, the compulsory behavior, and the difficulty situation, the difficult social the social interaction, how do we understand it? Where the mind is being mindful, that mind is strange. 
and Atta Sudanto Burisasa Jyoti, well trained mind becomes a backend of happiness. It means wherever mindfulness or awareness reaches, that place will be happiness. Because what we want is happiness, but we cannot have happiness because of there is no awareness enough. So there is no awareness, that play will be sooner or later suffering will take place. Our brain, you know, has been conditioned not to be mindful, but to react and to look at things with the past. So, you know, reacting brings problems to others and living in the past is the cause, but not a living beings anymore, let alone a human being. That is a very unfortunate way to live our life. So mindfulness practice is the Buddhist meditation to set our brain free from all kinds of conditions. So we are free. So happiness is the result of freedom. So we do not look for happiness, but we try to set up free first. So being aware, I am nothing, but without awareness, I am something else or someone. Being something or someone, is being problem and being nothing or no one is no problem do you want to have problem then can do easily no awareness no mindfulness and if you want to free the problem quickly you just be aware aware of anything even the problem appear being aware of that problem then you are awareness you are no more the problem that is the key and the second benefit is the immediate, right away, right now and right here benefit. Andhitiko, Akaliko, Hipasiko. Andhitiko means here, space. Akaliko means now, time. And Hipasiko means come and see and experience right now and right here. And meditation practice can experience the benefit right now and right here, in the present moment, in this very life. So if we say in, in English, oh, if something bad happened to her, we say, that is her karma. In Thai, we say, oh, kam, kam gong khao. In Vietnamese, we say, oh, nghe của nó. Which means she allows her past to be her future and control her present. She do not live her life. It's not go forward, but go in the cycle. You know, going in the cycle, once they not go anywhere, one just going from this kind of problem to another kind of problem. This kind of suffering to another kind of suffering, that is called samsara. Don't try to become anyone if you don't want to be suffer. So you have two choices of looking at things, at the fact or at the past. If at the fact, you have to use sati to look. With sati, there's no naming, reacting, judging, or resisting without mental noise in the forehead. Only the bare space of awareness in which you are capable of recording the past if you want. If not, then you are quiet, very calm, and you see things as they are in the very clear picture. But if you live at the past or if you let the past live through you, then that is called karma. You are consumed by the memories. Being consumed by the memory is the mental diarrhea, but not a high quality kind of mind, you know. So the capacity of the memory is not to let the owner suffer, but rather to serve us. So suffering by the memory is the disease that is conductive to the personality disorder. So if we think that the cycle goes surrounding is the new journey, is the dimension. Only, you know, by mindfulness is the tool to refresh our possibility, the capacity for us to live completely in the now, to enjoy our life in every moment. The third benefit is the big transformation. You know, food cannot measure the depth of ocean. If you want to know something beyond the physical, first, what we need to do is to have a perception that is very sharp enough beyond the five senses. We have to enhance our perceiving capacity, which is not the physical. 
Only then you can perceive the high level of understanding. Otherwise, you can only believe or disbelieve. Believe or disbelieve leads you to the confusion. Then confusion brings you suffering. And Buddhist meditation is the way leads you to clarity. Only clarity leads in you the, to the succession of suffering. Clarity means wisdom, you know. So observation without the background brings about the change. No other intermediate, no authority, no asking others to guide you, no light to light you. You lift up yourself. In that light, there is an action. You action under the light of mindfulness. It's flowering and underlying uh, a radical transformation. And to realize the Nibbana, that is the highest purpose of Vipassana mentioned in the Majjhima Nikaya number 10 and number 4. Benefit is understand others and society in living in harmony with relationship with others. Like Thomas uh, Bors ever say, if you want to know others, study yourself and you will know what is it like to be someone else. You know, when you live with others, you need to understand them. Understanding them we bring about compassion because everyone has the difficulties and the problem and the suffering. When we understand each other, we generate our compassion for each other. That moment love will come into being. So I would like to conclude my talk. A human actually is the one who has the most complex neurological system and the highest cerebral capacity in the planet mind and the body determine the quality of our life so let's change it with the meditation on mindfulness we'll decide our life quality so jayatha vama datha ma pata vibhasti sarino ahuvatha let meditate don't be lazy lest you may later regret on it the buddha say in majjhima nikaya one 46. Thank you very much for your watching. Sadhu.